Director of the Communications and Media Studies Program. And on behalf of CMS and the Elliott Pearson Department of Child Development, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the sixth Elliott Pearson Awards for Excellence in Children's Media. As the mother of four children, and as an academic whose career has in part been devoted to teaching about children's media and researching some of the effects of media on children, I've long been concerned about having quality children's media. There's no doubt but that there are more outlets than ever for producing media products geared for children. And there's no doubt but that children today are growing up in a world of wall-to-wall -wall media and spending ever-increasing amounts of time in front of screens of all sorts. But more doesn't necessarily mean better. And this gave us the original impetus to offer an award that recognized and celebrated excellence in children's media with the hope of encouraging more of it. In evaluating children's media content, we look for media that are appropriately pitched for children at different developmental levels. We look for media that are free of gender, ethnic, and racial stereotyping. We look for media that show children in richly sensitive and varied cultural contexts with families that reflect how families are constituted differently, that show characters who are civically engaged, thoughtful, and creative. We look for media that have good humor, intelligence, and good production values. We look for media that are both educational and entertaining. When we started the Elliott Pearson Awards, known affectionately around here as the Abbeys, after our founder, Abigail Adams Elliott, we only gave awards to television shows, since that was the dominant platform in children's media. But recognizing that there has been a veritable explosion of children's media, we started to give awards in several different categories. In addition to television, which remains an important force in children's lives, we have also given awards in film, interactive media, media literacy, and media advocacy. We'll hear a little later this morning how our very distinguished 2012 award winner crosses all of these platforms and exemplifies all that we value in children's media. Let me quickly say a word of thanks to some of the many people who were so integral in putting together today's event. My colleagues Susan Eisenhower and John Champa from Communications and Media Studies, our wonderful work study students, especially Will Carpenter. My colleagues from Elliot Pearson, Jamie Mystery, George Scarlett, and Chip Gidney. The fantastic Elliot Pearson staff, especially Mary Ellen Santangelo and Justina Clayton. Jeff Rawich and his great staff here at Gisler, where I love to do all of my events, and the superbly capable staff of the Barber out in Los Angeles. Please take this moment to remove one piece of technology from our proceedings this morning and turn off your cell phones and computers. And now, please join me in welcoming our 2012 Elliot Pearson Award winner, Mr. LeVar Burton. And as a scientist, 
we often talk about impact factors. And that is how often someone is cited by other people and the quality of the places in which that person is cited. So I just want to remark that your impact factor is off the charts. I can't do that. Your long career 
Spirit that has married social causes and media for your important work in television, film, and now the digital world, for your dedication to quality children's media, I am thrilled and honored to present you with the 2012 Elliot Pearson Award for Excellence in Children's Media.
It should have been a perfect summer. But it wasn't. It was all good until Jeremy Ross moved into the neighborhood right next door to my best friend, Stanley. I did not like Jeremy Ross. He laughed at me when he struck me out in a baseball game. He had a party on his trampoline, and I wasn't even invited. <laughs> but my best friend Stanley was. Jeremy Ross was the one and only person on my enemy list. I never even had an enemy list before he moved into the neighborhood, but as soon as he came along, I needed one. I hung it up in my treehouse where Jeremy Ross was not allowed to go. Yeah. 